Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Morgan's Pop Talks, breaking down the biggest headlines in reality TV and pop culture. Thank you for being here on week two of the Scandaball. We have lots to discuss today, but I hope you're doing good. I hope you're getting through your week. I got to tell you, I'm a little bit on vacation mode in my brain because if you're listening to this on a Thursday, um, I'm headed to Florida. If you're listening to this on a Friday, I am in Florida and I'm telling you, I'm in Cleveland. It's cold. It's snowy. It's gross outside. So I'm just ready to be laying in that. Florida sun, baby. It's a little bittersweet because um, if you're not new here, you know that my fiance, David, lives in London. We're trying to get him over here on a K-1 visa and he has to go back to London soon, you guys, like sooner than I would like to admit. Um, He goes back on April 8th. So we have less than a month and it's like, yes, I'm looking forward to this vacation with my family, but I'm also kind of dreading it because I know it's like the last big Thing that David and I have to look forward to together until he has to go back. So just send some T's and P's my way that we get this fiance visa sooner rather than later. But other than that, let's jump into the pop three. These are the three biggest headlines of the week. We have a new bachelorette and her name is Charity Lawson. And I've been telling you since night one, since Charity walked out of the limo in that hot pink sparkly dress, I was like, whoa, that girl has the it factor. And she just does. You know, she made it to hometowns. She had the best hometown date, in my opinion. I mean, her family was beyond precious. There's so much love between her and her family and her friends. And so you just know that she's such a great person based on what we saw from her hometown dates. Now, I got to be honest, I would have liked to have seen some more character development of her during the show. But all things considered, I definitely think she's the right pick. I've been saying it from day one. There's really nobody else that I even think could be considered to be the bachelorette. And when Jesse Palmer walked into the dressing room and told her the way that he told her, I cried. It was one of those golden buzzer moments. I don't know if I don't know if I'm the only person in the world that does this, but if I'm watching America's Got Talent, somebody gets the golden buzzer sobbing. I'm sobbing every time. And that's what happened when I saw Charity tell her parent, call her parents in the middle of the night and tell them that she's going to be the bachelorette. I don't, like I said, I don't think anybody else held a candle to her really this season. And she's a beautiful crier. All makes for a great bachelorette. I will recap all the rest of hometowns and the women tell all uh, this week on the bachelor brain dump, which comes out on Patreon on Friday. The link is in the show notes if you want to subscribe. Okay, let's move on to headline number two, Kyle and Carl's deteriorating friendship. So in this week's Summer House episode, we continue to see the fallout between Kyle, Carl, and Lindsay with this big blow up fight after Danielle called Amanda the least trustworthy. Lindsay like agreed and all hell broke loose quite literally, you know, when Kyle's voice goes up four octaves, things are going to go, things are going to get like bad zero to a hundred real quick screaming into the abyss. Nobody even really knows what he's talking about at this point, but Kyle off the show on social media, to me, it seems like Carl is very concerned with the perception of his and Carl's relationship. It seems like he's doing a little bit of damage control, in my opinion, on social media. And I don't think it's going to go down well. A few things. I do think that this vitriol for Lindsay is like a bit extreme. It's a pretty large assumption for Carl to come to the conclusion that Lindsay is the reason, you know, that Carl and his relationship is a little bit off. I would say that Kyle and Carl's relationship is off because of Kyle. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, I always do a rewatch before I start the new season. And I was rewatching earlier seasons. And on multiple occasions, Lindsay refers to Kyle as like a brother to her. And she's like, you know, he's like my brother. And she says, he says the same. She's like my sister and whatever. These like season one through three. So to go from that to Lindsay is the most manipulative person on the face of the earth. And she's like, you know, borderline demon is how Kyle presents it. I think is extreme. And I don't understand how we got here. But what I really can't understand about this Kyle, Carl, Lindsay feud is that Kyle really wants us to believe on social media that he and Carl are good. You know, he's posting selfies together. He's like, you know, we're getting through it. I love Carl. But we've seen this before with Amanda, Kyle, and Hannah. 
Hannah and Amanda were very good friends. Hannah has this big issue with Kyle. And subsequently, because of that issue, Hannah and Amanda can no longer pursue their friendship because the animosity between Hannah and Kyle is just too much. So I don't understand how Carl can think that this is good or how Kyle can think this is going to end well for him. I don't see how Carl would continue to be good friends with Kyle when Kyle clearly does not like Lindsay, thinks and speaks barely poorly of her. And quite frequently, I see a lot of similarities between these two friendship dynamics. And I think what happened with Hannah and Amanda is going to happen with Kyle and Carl, unless Kyle ditches the animosity to Lindsay and gets on good ter terms with her. I just, I just don't see any other way for them to come out of this. They're getting married. Kyle and Amanda are going to have to get over it if they want to have a relationship with Carl. So here's one thing I also will say. I, I do believe that we're not getting the full pic picture with Carl and Lindsay. So this was a great point made by Emily from She Speaks Bravo on Instagram. She was reminded of a scene from Windsor House last season where Kyle was talking about the dynamic between Carl and Lindsay when she was still drinking around October. And to make a very long story short, Kyle said that Carl said if Lindsay didn't stop drinking, that Carl was going to cut things off. So maybe this is like the missing piece of the puzzle here. Maybe that is what Danielle is referring to when she's voicing concern about them moving too quickly, when she calls it fragile, which I don't agree with the term, but I'm just trying to connect some dots here. Maybe they remember what happened in those earlier months when Lindsay was drinking and now that they're going down that path. I don't agree, you know, with Kyle and Danielle, but I'm just trying to you know, think about how they're viewing things. So also one last thing. I think that Kyle doesn't know how to handle Carl's growth. When doing my rewatch, I realized that Kyle handles situations the same way he did seven years ago. Season after season, we watch him drink too much, have blow up fights where he's screaming at everyone, breaking things, not answering Amanda's phone calls. But it's like we're supposed to sit back and believe that he and Amanda are now the stable ones and Carl and Lindsay are the crazy ones. And I don't think Kyle and Amanda are bad people, but to me, it just seems like a deflection. One season ago, on the first episode of that season, Kyle and Amanda were breaking each other's things, throwing each other's luggage out on the front porch, having marriage contracts. And because Carl and Lindsay are navigating, you know, Carl's sobriety and trying to do so in the best way that feels good for both of them, they're the ones that... <laughs> are unstable? I don't know. And to you, it may be boring, but to me, I enjoy seeing Carl grow as a person. I enjoy seeing Carl handle conflict in a different way than he would seven years ago. Maybe that's just me. Okay. Third and final headline, Tristan Thompson's birthday was this weekend and fans are confused about Chloe and even Kris Jenner's social media posts, we'll say. So this is the first Kardashian update I've done in forever because, you know, I've just been a little off them lately. But Tristan turned 32 this week and Chris and Chloe went big on the Instagram love. Chris did a seven slide Instagram story and Chloe did a really long caption. She says, happy birthday, Tristan. You're truly the best father, brother and uncle. Your love, attention, silly dances, hugs, carpool rides, bedtime rituals, the way you show up for them. All of the above means more than you'll ever know to your family of littles. My birthday wish for you is that you continue to crave change, healing, and transformation. Be strong, be kind, be patient, be free. Continue to make your soul and your mommy proud. Happy birthday, baby daddy. So she said, continue to crave change. Yikes, my geek. So it also caused some confusion online because in some pictures, Chloe is covering up her son's face, I'm guessing, you know, the son's face is shown in some videos it's covered in, or in some pictures it's covered in other pictures. But, you know, the speculation is, are they back together? Are they back together? This seems like a very loving post. I'm going to say no, but honestly with them, like you never know, but she's saying, you know, continue to crave change and whatever. And at first I was like, what is going on here? But then a lot of you so graciously pointed out to me, you know, Tristan did just go through a pretty traumatic life experience losing his mother. So I think that knowing what we know about the Kardashians, specifically Chris and Chloe, they 
have a lot of empathy for people. I think they do take on people's feelings. So maybe just trying to show Tristan some extra love during this hard time in his life, which I think is a really nice thing of them to do. So I will chill out on this one. I will have some sympathy also. Um, and yes, Chris Jenner did a seven slide Instagram post, but um, Kathy Hilton got five slides after that. So it's fine. Okay, let's get to this week's deep dive. Every week on the podcast, I open up my deep dive submissions on Instagram to you. What do you want to know more about this week? It comes from Victoria. Hey, Morgan. It's Victoria from Key West, Florida. I need, we need a Scandaval update. What is happening with the cast? Are they still filming? What is happening with the reunion? Do you think Raquel will be there? I need updates, please. Thank you for getting me through my work week. And I love you like a sis. Victoria, love you like a sis. Yes, we do need the Scandaval updates. I'm an expert, but I also recruited another expert to talk about this with me. Ryan Bailey from So Bad It's Good is here to break down all the Scandaval updates. Hi! We're reporting from day 14 of the Scandaval <laughs> Uh, I think it's day for it. It could be a year. I don't. Uh, it's been 84 no, yeah. years. Oh, my God. <laughs> and by the way, you know, I was just listening to you. I do not. Uh, I'm 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 angry about that Tristan stuff all over again. In fact, that was the first glimpse of something like beyond Tom Sandoval that I could get angry about. So I was like, OK, yes, yeah, something new, because I've had such a hard time concentrating on anything else but this one story. And and it's yeah. like I'm trying. I'm like I'm like I remember when I used to like care about other things yep. be- before this two weeks ago, and I it is so fascinating. But I'm like, is there light at the end of this tunnel at all? There's not. We've been ruined forever because I have had the same reaction. You know, Megan Fox spotted without her engagement ring. I'm like, who don't cares? care. I don't care. <laughs> hey, she had her time. Like they they should fix that relationship by now. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Let's focus on this thing that I was completely surprised by. I know. And now I'm thinking, am I ruined forever? Like every pop culture story to me is nothing will ever be oh. as scandalous as this. They're showing Beverly Hills photos of them filming. I could care less. I could be like, you know what? I don't even need them to continue. Like this this one story could ruin Bravo for the rest of Bravo. Like Bravo should pack it up after this because the, I just don't see how how us as an audience, like we're so excited because it's so tragic. And I don't, it's like before with the Erica Jane and the Jen Shaw of it all with like the legal system that had its like two year moment. And now this goes back to like the heart and soul of things that we actually you know it it's weird when it when an audience can be made to feel something um other than anger about mm. like somebody's you know and I, I think we assume that the housewives are already kind of they're kind of lost causes like once you get to like housewives territory yeah but like with vanderpump they started at a level we all started at as mm. like bartenders and waiters and all of these things and we've seen them grow and the sad thing is they've never grown it's here yeah. 10 seasons later there has been no growth and i think that's the thing that you're sh- like how did sandoval make a potentially worse move than Jax did in his first season on the show right. 10 right. seasons later And I think that's what has been so intriguing about this is because we all thought that they had grown. I mean, I see that we've had this conversation a thousand times on every video I post. This is no worse than Jackson. Chris, it's worse. It's 10 years later. This dude is 41 years old. He's it's bought all, a house with this woman. Like, it, come it, on. It's, it's also worse because we never expected much from Jax. We right. had already, we always assumed he was the bad guy. Every time he said he changed, there would be another season where he showed he had not changed. Right. He became a running joke and he like became a villain in every season that he was in with Sandoval because of Ariana you started to believe you saw him better through Ariana's eyes and and I was so take like I mean me personally I feel like an idiot I went to bat for this dude I thought all of his intricacies I was like (laughs) here's somebody that's not out there creeping on women he's in love with Ariana and he's out there doing his own weird things which people make fun of but then it actually like he makes them happen Mm -hmm. I I derived inspiration from this guy which is so sad on my part Um, no it's not but no it really I mean like I bought this hook line and sinker I was such a fan of his and of theirs. And uh, it's just sad. It's uh, to me that that's the thing that keeps, and we're going to keep having things that keep coming out 
uh, about this that are going to continue to horrify us. Mm -hmm. The thing I keep thinking about, though, is now eventually we're going to have to not because we're asking, but we will have to hear their side of everything. And now they've had a couple of weeks to really solidify their side of things. Yeah, that's so true. I do. I agree with you. I always have been um, a Tom Sandoval. I don't even know if apologist is the right word, but I have been a fan of the two Toms together. You know, like I, I loved their shtick. I wanted my bachelorette party to be at Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandy's. Like all the things. But you hey, know- it, it still can. Uh, you have, you're gonna have plenty of room. It's gonna be easy to get to. You're, you're, you'll be able to totally do this. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I want to start with this then because you went to Schwartz and Sandy's last week right after all of this happened yeah i mean listen th- that was <laughs> that was not like i admit i was like i'm never going to there again but then a, re- a reporter an entertainment reporter from the washington post was like i would love to take you to shorts and sandys and interview about the whole situation and i was like you know what i feel a little weird about that and but she like and so i i was in there and i felt so guilty i did not pay <laughs> i did not pay any of my own money and this is no offense to Schwartz and Sandys or the people that work there. And by the way, I almost apologized to Greg, the evil other owner, because I was like, this guy was right all along. He was there. And I was I I just think the aw shucks approach of Schwartz and like, oh, well, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't it's cute. He's a great looking guy. He's very charming, so nice to anybody that he meets. But at the same time, in 2023, can we can we start expecting a little more from men? Can we yeah. I mean why 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 do they get a pass? And then all of the women, you know, they're the ones we zero in on time and time again. Not to say Rachel Raquel is not horrible. She really is horrible. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes don't get how they get this huge pass season after season now. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with Schwartz because over the weekend, that was like the first big thing. The first big update. He stopped at LAX by paparazzi. He gives his first statement. And it is like an aw shucks kind of thing. You know, he's sitting there like, oh, there's a profound sadness. But I hope it all blows over. I mean, oh, what did you make of his? Okay. So stuff? I had I had two guys from the Hollywood Raw podcast that used to work for TMZ uh, on today. And we talked about, so this is, uh, it's like a staged walk and talk. So, you know, Schwartz knows that he's going to be approached at LAX. Uh, you know, he might not know these specific questions, but you'll even notice the guy that stops him knows everything about the situation. Asks mm-hmm. very, and Schwartz is, you know, Schwartz isn't shocked. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. We're meeting under some such auspicious circumstances <laughs> and then he's but then like just the verbiage you know he's yeah. like i just hate that it's like and i'm waiting for him to say ariana that it's affecting our business so you know and then at the very and then you go have you talked to ariana i have not but like i hope she's living it up i yeah. hope she's going on a living spree right now and i'm like doofus she's a week into this you guys have known for seven months she's a week into this yeah i hope she's going on a living spree and celebrate like i just love that they treat it like well she's probably can go off and party right now it's like mm-hmm. you dolts don't understand like everybody thinking this is fake is that this is so not fake yeah it's just that sandoval has been doing this for seven months maybe more and schwartz has known more than a month let's just call it out like it is he's not just found out a month ago he found out longer ago than that and these guys are just tools i mean they're fun they're charming they're fun to watch all that crap but they're tools they don't really do what it do what matters in the moment or to the people that they that really love them and that they say they really love so it's like even that interview is kind of charming and funny and like, I don't know, man. It's just crazy, man. I'm just so sorry about like, oh, man, Sandoval's just a, an ass, man. He, like, it's like a boys club. It's like yeah. they've been doing this for so long. Yeah. And I I didn't know that it was entirely staged. But, you know, anytime you see Backgrid, which that was clearly on the video, which if you don't know, Backgrid is kind of notoriously known for people calling paparazzi on themselves. So I think his willingness to continue on and on and on and on with this conversation and even ask the guy, well, what do you think? Of-? Nobody what cares. What do you think, it. bro? <laughs> what? Why and he asking? goes, I haven't seen you since my divorce, I guess is the last time. He says that. <laughs> And and by the way, I do want to point out too, and it was uh, told to me from the TMZ guys 
Because I was like, is Schwartz making money off of this? And it's like, no, he's not making money. Backgrid is making the money because they license it to um, outlets like TMZ. Mm. Just like the Lala Kent interview on the street from TMZ yesterday. Uh, Lala Kent doesn't make money off of that. But it is still set up because they're like, I'm going to be here. Come, you know, and they send somebody down there. And it's just like a a normal paparazzi walk and talk. So after all of this, we were speculating on what was going to happen with Winter House because we had heard that both the Toms were going to go. Well, now it's come out that Tom Sandoval obviously is not going, but Tom Schwartz has been spotted filming Winter House. What are your thoughts on on him still going? I, I Okay. This is the other thing. Of course, I don't want either of them there. Why celebrate this bad behavior? But you have to remember, Bravo is still a corporation run by a corporation, NBC Universal. And as much as, you know, remember, this is a house built on bad people. So, you know, of course, we're outraged. Send Katie, send Ariana. I would mm-hmm. much rather that. But and I have a theory on this, too, is that, of course, like. Also, Bravo wants cameras there. Right. They want to have that conversation. And by the way, if we really look within ourselves, we want to hear what Schwartz... We want to hear more of this anyways. Yeah. My theory is, though, is that, yeah, Sanibal's not there right now. I believe by this weekend or the very last day, Sandoval will show up and you will have a conversation between Schwartz and Sandoval where it'll be like, you hung me out to dry, man. Why didn't you let me know sooner? I look like an idiot. And it'll be like, I'm so sorry, Schwartz. I love you so much. You know, like, don't like, call. I need you, man. Yeah. I have a feeling we will see something like that because you do. I mean, this is the most... Uh, interest Bravo has had in a very long time. So, of course, they want cameras on this as much as possible. Um, so I, I have a I have a belief that Sandoval will make an appearance. I like it. I mean, I hadn't thought about it either. But when you when you look back on last season of Winter House, I mean, why were we all tuning in? It was because we had heard that Tom and Katie were getting a divorce. We all knew that this was the first time that a camera was going to be on Tom Schwartz since that had been announced. And that was a major draw. So I can only imagine. And I know they're doing a little bit of a cast shakeup. I think Danielle Oliveira is going. I think I saw some guys from Family Karma yeah. going to Winter House. Yeah, you, you, have, you have below deck people going yeah, to Winter yeah. I mean, well, listen, I mean, after this week's Summer House episode, I think the Summer House Winter House franchise is in real need of finding out what the F they're doing as mm-hmm. a whole. Like, But I will say, like, the, the news I had gotten, too, was that they did have to switch it up a bit because initially Schwartz and Sandoval were hosting the entire oh. Winter House. They were hosting as a team. Wow. So that did get switched up from my understanding. Also, we have Amanda Batula not being there because of COVID, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kyle still is there. So it'll be interesting. But I think, uh, I just think there's, the, 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 God, the Bad Boys Club on on Bravo has just strengthened so much. And it's just one of those weird things because you look at it from a human level, but then you look at it from a show level. And these are... I was watching reruns of Vanderpump Rules because they're airing it nonstop on Bravo right now. And I was watching the season finale of season three and it was literally Dodie and, and Sandoval, you know, they had already like Dodie was with DJ James Kennedy. Uh Sandoval was with Ariana and Christian has this talking head where it's like, you win Ariana. You can be the one wondering where he is late at night when he's not answering your text messages. Mm. You can wonder who he's hanging out with when, and I, you know, in that moment when I watched it, I was like, oh, screw you, Dodie. You're just right. like, why? You're like, but now you watch no, back and better. well, and, and there is truth to that. I mean, not, nobody's a perfect character on this, but uh, you're just like, damn, this is a dude. Cause when I knew Sandoval and stuff like that, like, he was always out. Like, I've been around him when he's always out. But I always just thought, like, oh, well, he's not out creeping on girls. He's out doing his thing. And Ariana gives him that gives him that rope because they understand yeah. each other. And it wasn't like Ariana was just locked away. In her. Like, she would go out a lot, too. But nothing compared to Sandoval. And I just thought, that's just how that dude is. And he's he wants to go out there and sing with his 12-piece band, you know, and, and <laughs> hobnob. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we're going to get into the reunion and all the stuff that's come out this week about that. But I just I know what's coming with Sandoval, you know, and and 
saying, well, Ariana, you don't support me. And it's like, but she does, dude. She lets you do everything you want to do. She lets you start these business ventures. She lets you start this band. She's sitting there front row. Like, what do you mean she doesn't support you? And I want to know, have you, did you ever pick up on anything? Cause you were around them, you know, more than any of us are. Were, were there ever any little moments where you're like, huh, that was weird. I mean, little, no, I mean, so I even went to Coachella with them this past year. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like the Raquel, like, like I, what I always say, even on my show is that Raquel was always like nice, but I could never get a beat on. You can't get a read on her. Mm -hmm. Like I always just use the word vacant. I would always be like, does she understand what's happening? Like, I, I would always just be kind of confused. I remember telling my friend, I'm like, I just never understand if she understands what's happening. Like it just would be vacant, but not mean in any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. But Tom, like, you know, like even in the music festival sense, Tom was wanting to put us all on his shoulders. And I'm a big guy. He's like, Let, I can do it, dude. I can do it. Like, he was that guy trying to get everybody amped up. In fact, I had many moments at Coachella where I was with him and Ariana and they were like making out. And like, I, I, I did not question it at all. In fact, I was there when that rumor came out with the Schwartz thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, it was actually, I was like, that's so funny. Like, that's how not true some of these things are. Cause like, I'm here right now. Schwartz yeah. is not even here. I said, this is wild. Like, in fact, I was watching Raquel, like the most of the weekend, she would hang out with Jesse Montana. She would hang out with like Brad and like, I mean, Kashina, all those people were there. And I just never, I mean, but at this point, I'm not going to put anything past him at all. But I personally, what I keep hearing again and again from that group is, July. In fact, I, in fact, on today, uh, Jamie, uh, mm -hmm. Lynn's podcast, uh, who I'm, I'm friends with, she had tipped me off this a week ago. She couldn't release it because she was waiting for something else to happen. And she finally released it yesterday, but it was basically saying this started after tonight's episode right. on Vanderpump rules drops. It started because Raquel has a breakdown on the way home from Vegas because all the girls were mean to her, which I, in retrospect is probably not that mean. Mm -hmm. The boys' night was happening, and then afterwards they went to Saddle Ranch. Jamie, uh, Brett, the manager over at Schwartz and Sandy's, Tom, and Raquel, and she has a video of them, and they were joking about it, of like a video where Schwartz and her were like having this really intense conversation very close, and They're they were Sandoval. mimicking Sandoval, sorry, and yeah. they were mimicking their voices, mm -hmm. and they thought they was really funny. But Jamie, in retrospect, says, now you watch it without us making fun of it. And you're like, that is way too close. Yeah. And that is what, you know, now we're seeing things from a different light. I will say she has given that video to production. So who knows if production will edit that in in the final episode. But the other thing I keep hearing from all my sources behind the scenes is that, and this keeps getting hit everywhere, even by Andy, that they are not re-editing the season. Mm -hmm. They are not like I. I mean, e even from cast members have let me know they are not re. You, you're not going to believe it, but they are not doing it. And I don't know why they keep saying that. I guess because things now take on a new light, obviously. Right. Uh, but but I guess we're going to see that whole last episode will probably be. I, I hope they use footage. All these people, like, rec I have tons of video of those guys. I mean, I have tons of videos of, like, Sandoval and Ariana and Schwartz and Raquel at BravoCon in a part. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I it, it blows my mind. I would never, but, like, no, to, to your point, no, n nothing weird at all. Like, I went to all those Sandoval shows. I saw more than the, like, Co Countess Luanne or the Grateful Dead. Like, <laughs> Ariana was always, like, and by the way, like, his band, I really like it. It's a lot of fun. But Ariana was there all the time. It was right. like she was so supportive when it's like going to your friend's improv show. Like after one time, it's like, <laughs> I, like I, I, okay. I, I get it. And she was always like, I, but there, also they had problems like any other normal couple does. But what I'm hearing and what I, you know, is what, I, what sucks is you're like, you know, you're going to get that. She wasn't supportive of my endeavors. Mm -hmm. She didn't, you know, um, you know, the, the sexual relate chemistry was gone, all of these things. And then the reality of it, and if you go by season three of Vanderpump rules or season two, is that like, potentially it wasn't as exciting for Tom and Tom's mind. Yeah. And as a narcissist, he sees somebody with Bambi eyes, like looking and like praising every move that he does yeah. and having a schoolgirl crush and stuff like that. And that's probably pretty attractive when you're thinking you're on top of the world. I, I imagine that's what it was like because everybody says they had suspicions, but not in the sense that Tom was like, they had suspicions that she had a schoolgirl crush. Right. That she had a, she was crushing on him, but that it was not reciprocated in any sense. So take that for whatever 
you, you know, whatever you want, but nothing to this extreme. But I didn't notice any issues with them, but I'm also not in their private lives or yeah. any, you know, but it just sucks. Like I've been it over sucks. their house. It's so nice. It's like they put so much work into that thing and they, I, it's just, it just really bums me out because like Sandoval's the kind of guy to probably try to figure out a way to capitalize on this. And Ariana is not, you right. know, like, yeah. Ari- and by the and the, the whole attention economy around this with Lala and her Daryl sweatshirts and all of this stuff, like even myself and all of, you know, like there, there's an economy based around this now mm-hmm. and Ariana's not released a statement. And from right. what I hear, she's probably not going to release a statement. And, you know, Ariana's always just been that person on the right side of things and somebody that will come up and talk to you if you're feeling down, yeah. somebody that's going to try to understand you and somebody that doesn't put herself first in terms of even, you know, being on a show, like, like, look at me, look at me. Yeah. She's not like that as much as the rest of them are, if that makes sense. Yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. I think even the way that this situation has unfolded in the public eye, I mean, you look and Tom's had to, two statements and Raquel has had two statements and Ariana. I mean, she deactivated her, deactivated her Instagram account. So just totally different approaches. I do want to get into the reunion because there's been a lot of talk about what is going on with the reunion. We know we have this temporary restraining order between Raquel and Sheena. Um, I read that Sheena's lawyer is like accusing Raquel of sabotaging the reunion. Basically, they can't be in the same place together. Um, They can't have any meaningful conversation with this temporary restraining order. They can't even speak. So I've seen headlines about Zoom. If they had to choose one, who's going, Sheena or Raquel? It's got to be Raquel, right? Well, I mean, listen, I'm also in a in a world where, you know, the Zoom technology is not great, but it's amazing enough where you could have them in the same facility and usher one out to a room, lock yeah. the room, have it guarded by whoever you want and bring one on stage. Like there's ways around this. It's like if Raquel wants to play ball or not, because, you know, Sheena's going to be there regardless of anything and want mm-hmm. to be there. But yeah, Raquel is the one that we want to see and we'd prefer to see her in person. But I'd also prefer to see Sheena in person with her. Like, I mean, I, and if you listen to that Jamie Lynn podcast, again, they they talk about this. Um, They talk about the fact that the fact that, you know, her friend, this gentleman that she interviews is, uh, is saying that this is a little bit of a setup that there wasn't, you know, she didn't even complain about a fight with Sheena. She just said she was hammered that night. And uh, he had a lot of information about her mental state. And it seemed like Raquel Rachel was doing fine, was just going like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. She signed up for this. And she signed up for this since 2018. This is not a newbie by any stretch of the imagination. She just gets painted as a newbie. And she likes to be treated like somebody, you know, like Christina Kelly said last week. She wants to be, she's treated like a child and a baby that everybody like, you know, she doesn't, she didn't even know know what boundaries were until a couple of weeks ago, according to Sandoval, you know, and which, by the way, it's another thing of like Sandoval trying to like, is he trying to like Sven Gully her, her like, a, yeah. like a Kanye West kind of a vibe? Yeah. And like, um, and he and she lets him, and which is probably another very attractive thing. But I, uh, the reunion, it, I was also hearing there was a potential that this was going to get dropped, and I think it's going to really be how the next couple of weeks goes. Uh, I think we all play a part of that too. Is like we're all saying the worst stuff in the world. And I think a lot of it's really deserved. Um, But I think that will make her hesitant to show up personally. Um, If anything, I I mean, I don't think it's going to even be a choice of like, you can go or Sheena can go. I think Raquel will do it, but she'll say, I'll I'll only do it over Zoom. I don't think she wants to be in the same physical space. Um, but you know, that, that could change at a moment's notice. The one thing that I still don't have an answer for him. And I try to put out filler feelers everywhere is that why are we not holding it until after the TRO hearing? If that, I don't understand that because it's like, if you're doing the extra episode, if you're doing this, like, why not give the extra week? We'll all wait for it. Like, what is the story behind this? Did you already pre-sell advertising? I don't know why that is. It doesn't make sense to me in any stretch of the imagination because it's not even like if you 
you were really wanting to hop on it while it's hot, like you would air the reunion this week then once you film it. I don't get that part. Have you heard anything? No. And and I had the same exact thought. Like, it can't be that difficult to postpone the reunion one week because the way I interpreted this, you know, they have to go before a a judge on March. It's either the 29th. Okay, 29th. Yeah. And then literally, if the judge is like, this is stupid whatever which is that's kind of the vibe that we're all which is what i what i what i hear that the judge will probably not grant the restraining order to to begin with so it's like this temporary situation and the way i understood it from that jamie uh podcast today with his, his friend kale um that they're automatically granted like if you fill one out and send it in like they're like okay yes until we're able to go to a court which is kind of the space that we're in right now people wanted to argue with me that all day long when i posted that last week i think it was one of the first people and people wanted to argue oh it's not granted it's not granted in los angeles though they just that's part of it of like you are not supposed to be around each other until the hearing then the judge will either grant or not grant that and then it's business back to normal so uh, there's also that thing that came out yesterday where she didn't check the box where you, you know, the physical contact box. So mm. maybe that's a loophole. I'm not sure. But I, let's just say that, I mean, I don't think Raquel at this point wants to be around everybody. I think she, but also she, I get so much weird vibe. Like, I just don't know how much she really cares about yeah. Any of this. I think it's she weird. cares way more about being on the show than running away from these people because she's worked a, a you know really long and hard to get to where she is on the show to be a main cast member and it's like one sure way to shoot yourself in the foot is to not show up to a reunion especially when you are the center of you know, the catastrophic bomb that has gone off and is going to catapult the rating. So I feel like she's going to go. I feel like they're going to have to work this out. E- even if they just postpone it one week, we'll be waiting. But another hypothetical question I have for you is let's say that Raquel is going to the reunion. Do you think that Raquel and Sandoval are going to be together come reunion time? Are they going to show up hand in hand? No. I I personally don't think so. I think Sandoval, uh, you know, not in the moment, but now is reading the room a little bit mm-hmm. where I think I I could be completely wrong. I think he would be like, I love her very deeply, but it's just not the time. I think he's going to give it a couple of months. They might even still be dating like behind the scenes. Yeah. But I also I think. What a kick in the ass. Like, I mean, really, to go from a nine-year relationship to all of a sudden in love with somebody else and then all of a sudden being affectionate in front of all your friends that you've lied to for an entire, you know, year. Yeah. I think that is, like, such a dark, disturbing thing. And I I don't even – I was about to say I believe in love. I don't even know if I do believe in love. <laughs> but to me, that's just, like, so gross. And it's, like, so tactless. And this guy is not with tact at all anymore. But so gross. And I, I think – We want to see it in the way we want to see car accidents or like drive by them and look at them. Like Mm -hmm. it's such, that would be such a mess. I think he will not do that, but only to save himself, only to save that, uh, that reaction that we would give him because it would be memed forever. It would be, you know, all of a sudden, you know, having Ariana and him stand up for each other to all of a sudden sitting next to Raquel and being like, you know, don't you yell at her, la la. You know, that's my girl. That would be insane. That would be insane. Well, and also think about the reunions. This is the part I keep mentioning is that Sandoval is not a good communicator. Sandoval's good at being passionate. He'll usually default to crying or yelling. And he can never finish oh, his thoughts. Yeah, it's always Ariana, you know. That's what I'm saying. Ariana is like for him. Is, I mean, it's even, they've talked about this. Ariana will use, like, I know what Tom means, so I'll help finish his thoughts. And so that's why when they do the reunion and stuff, she helps out a lot. He has nobody. Because you know Rachel isn't going to, like, do diddle about, like, helping. Like, you know, it's going to be the blind leading the blind. And what I keep saying is, like, he has verbal assassins coming for him. For him. Yeah. La La, DJ James Kennedy. Every I mean, you bring in, you're bringing Dodie back and Ancient Evil. You're bringing, like... <laughs> You're bringing all of these people to come in and just ride that guy, and he's not a good communicator, so he's going to have to, like, 
really just take it. In fact, I don't even know how you have a reunion base with anything else. And we've had this whole Katie Schwartz thing happening. And now all of a sudden it's like, we're just focused on this. Yeah. I also do think too, though, as far as like, Raquel and Sandoval's future, it could go two very different ways. You know, they could get engaged and have a baby by the end of the year. Or I think if it's to believe, if it's to be believed what she says, that she's this love addict and is serious about getting the help that she needs, according to her statement, she cannot be with Tom. If she's a love addict, Tom is essentially her drug in this situation. And how are you going to better yourself? How are you going to prove to people that this is really the issue at hand, that it's this deep rooted issue. If you're just going to walk into the sunset hand in hand with him, you know, even as soon as in two weeks at the reunion. Well, that's what I keep thinking too, is that how gross that we're now in a position if we're to believe Raquel or Rachel's apology of, you know, like I, I just, I need some time to myself to really think about it. It's like, as, as much as I like Tom and I'm like, I don't give it, I don't need to hear what you <laughs> yeah, feel about Tom. Care I don't like care. Oh, yeah. like, I mean, like, uh, I'm say sorry to your friend, Ariana, who they were really good friends, like yeah. really good friends. Really good. Friend. I don't care where you're at with Sandoval, honestly. Like, but it is in a weird position now where I'm like, oh, does Sandoval have to like fight to get Rachel back? Like <laughs> Sandoval's outside of her. Like, we're like in your eyes tonight. Like, is he with a boom box out? like trying to romance. Like that's yeah. so gross. But you know he's probably they're in this weird headspace of like I can't lose my new girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the gross thing is that potentially he's even probably focused on the wrong things right now. Like, yeah, I I don't think he thinks outside the purview of himself. Yeah, well, it's like you blow up your whole life and then you don't even. He probably is thinking I've blown up my whole life and I'm not even going to walk away with. Raquel like how do I reconcile that which I really they shouldn't be together there's no way that this is like them riding off into the sunset but I have one more thing I want to talk to you about before I let you go and it's Teddy Mellencamp for what are your oh my god oh my god wait wait do you know I talked about her today on the show? Did you? No. Oh my God! I went off. First off, her name is her name is Freddie Mellencamp. Her name is Freddie Mellencamp, and I think and I don't know if you guys know, but I think she used to be a friend of on Beverly Hills. I, I think she was on right. Yeah, Freddie yeah. Mellencamp. Okay. I think she was on this season. I don't know. Um, are you about to say about what her theory is? Is yes. that what you're about to? Okay. Yes. Okay, guys, it's early in the year, and I know this is my, but I think we might already have, like, the winner of worst take for attention of the year. Her take is Lisa Vanderpump paid Rachel to cheat with Sandoval. That that is, and, you know, it would be fine if Freddie Mellencamp had not been on the show, but she's been on, what a way to show that you've paid attention to nothing, like, it's not even a hot take if it's that dumb. Like that's a, I would like it's not a hot take if it's that dumb. Like yeah. even even Tamara was like, uh, girl, that's not uh that that sounds <laughs> that sounds a little weird, you know? Like it is like she wants to be she wants to be she wants to be this so bad. She wants yeah. to like be on top of this and she wants to be you so bad and she wants to like she and she it's so sad because I just don't think she gets the whole thing as a whole. Like she, like these are her friends, and I like, like, but she, I don't think she gets how the whole ecosystem works to begin with. So that's a wild theory. And and uh, on top, just the basic of it. Okay, so Lisa Vanderpump paid Rachel. Well, we know that's not true because we know Lisa Vanderpump is infamous, infamously cheap. I mean, she's cheap as hell. She's not going to pay anybody. She won't. I mean, are you kidding me? Like honestly, she is cheap as hell. So you think? We know. Yeah. We've heard. Dear, dear girl, I'll give you $1,000 if you do a little wanky wanky with Mr. Tom Sandoval. Like, I mean, think about how dumb of a take that is. And the thing is, so it's either, it's, I can't, I can't, it's, it's either dumb. She's like, she's dumb and that's a dumb take. Or she knows it's a dumb take and she knows we're all going to scream about it. Yeah. I just keep saying I come from a world that I still I still want to either be funny or actually make a point and have people talk about me for like decent reasons. Mm -hmm. But I feel like nowadays people just want to be talked about, even if it's for like saying one of the it's most good, idiotic yeah. things. But it's like, think, imagine how many takes you can have on this. Imagine how you could really start to think about how this affects somebody personally, how somebody's psychology could go into this. You could have a really fascinating discussion about narcissism. And that's where she goes. Yeah. Lisa Vanderpump paid for this to happen. And I'm just like, 
man, it's like, thank God Tamara is the one leading that ship because it would crash otherwise. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, did you think that was... Oh, it was the that most any... outrageous thing. And it's like any opportunity that she still can use to, I don't even know if it's throw Lisa Vanderpump under the bus because you're not accomplishing the goal. You know, it's like you didn't say that and everyone's like, yeah, she's right. You know, it's like exactly what you said. Everyone's looking at her like, are you serious? Like what? Lisa is not that desperate for Vanderpump rules to get a boost in ratings. They were having a good season anyways with what was going on with Schwartz and Raquel at the time. So I too thought that that was <laughs> wild. <laughs> We're all having these really impassioned conversations and so many people are making such good points and all of that stuff. And it's like that thing where everybody's like, okay, yeah. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. Okay. Okay. What about you, Freddie? And then she says her point and they're like, <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. What do we got over here? Like it makes zero sense and it makes you sad. And you're just like, oh girl, like you could have went any way with that. And you, that's where you went. Like, yeah. I just like, I'm like, and you're even in these shows. You've been on these shows. And like, that's how you think. Like, I know these shows sometimes manipulate things and stuff like that, but not to this degree. Like you got to. Like, I can assure you that money did not exchange hands. I can assure you. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things. Like, I think Schwartz knowing for more than a month. You know, I think there's some, like, real weird stuff bet between the Schwartz relationship and Sandoval. And by the way, so many people have sent me photos now of Schwartz's, you know, probable girlfriend, Joe, mm -hmm. and Raquel and Sandoval on multiple occasions. Oh. Uh, I have a bunch of different, like, somebody that infiltrated Joe's Instagram account that's private and I'm not usually, I'm not the account that will, I'm not, you know, I, I don't do tea scoops or anything yeah. like that. So like I sit on a lot of information, but like, that's the kind of stuff where like, that's where you could like look into a little deeper, but like right. Lisa Vanderpump pain. I just think that's <laughs> like, really, that's, that's the big take like, made me so sad. Yeah. Good job, Freddie. <laughs> we're talking about Freddy. you on the podcast. I yeah, listen, that. like, good. We're still talking about you. And that's every, you see that on Twitter. Well, everybody's still talking about her. Yeah, I guess. Like, I mean, <laughs> we talk about, like, yeah, we're talking about it. Like, like a, uh, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, we're talking about her. Yeah, it is ridiculous. We'll end it there because I feel like we learned a lot. Ryan, thank you. I know. Sorry, I was on one, you guys. No, Sorry, I was really, I love this it. is. I needed it because I have been so deep and it's like, I'm an empath. So I start to take on a, the other people's emotions. Oh, I've been so I, sick. I've been so like sick to myself. Oh, I can't. Over it. The, the, the Friday. Well, like it broke on Friday and Friday night. Like, I mean, I was, Surprise. I was in console. I couldn't, I, I, I just, I felt, and I, that might be narcissist too. I didn't feel like it happened to me, but I know some of the people involved and I was just like, this is just, beyond sad because yeah. it was like really it just from even a personal level it was like i just never thought like you could by the way you don't have to like you can fall out of love with someone you can do a lot of things that's not a crime mm -hmm. what he did though is a crime hiding something for seven months that is this deep when you're on also a very public show and yeah. you may you know and if you're gonna blame somebody's mental health and then on top of it go well i will protect her by having this all like a full-blown nat like this is on the new york yeah. times it's on the washington post like that's like that's harmful for somebody's mental health right and also don't treat people with mental health issues like i have mental health don't like like we can't do things like we can't handle things we right. deal with more things than most people ever will ever imagine so it's not that ariana can't handle things but this is the kind of stuff that scars people for life because yeah. I don't think any of them saw this coming. And Lee, I mean, not to mention it has the potential to leave her with trust issues for the rest of her life. Exactly. Like, how is she going to move forward into other relationships after this? Well, listen, Freddie Mellencamp once said the government is <laughs> the government is now involved. The government, uh, they tipped Ariana off a long time ago. If you listen to Freddie Mellencamp, <laughs> that's what those spy balloons were for. They yeah, were spying yeah, on yeah. Sandoval every It's not. It's. It's called Sandanon. Sandanon. It's not cute. Not. It's Sandanon. And it's, it goes deep. It goes so much deeper, you guys. You guys don't want to. It would scare the living daylights out of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you for helping yes, me laugh this about is awesome. the situation. I'm sure we will speak between now and the reunion. But in case my listeners don't know where to find you, tell us about your Instagram and your podcast. 
Uh, Instagram, so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. A lot of silly memes, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey is the podcast. We have uh, a lot of great guests. I mean, I had uh, Kirby Johnson, who's a great uh, guest. Hollywood Raw, who worked at TMZ. We did tons of Vanderpump stuff every week and on Fridays I do a full Vanderpump line by line recap that is insanely silly but also makes some good points and uh, yeah just check it out just, you know we do it every day so just listen to the ones that uh, seem interesting to you well thank you Ryan thank you oh you guys I needed that laugh so bad like I said I you know I've been going through the stages of grief so to be able to just laugh like that while still talking about something pretty scandalous and serious was good for the soul I hope you enjoyed it please review the show if you haven't I got some great reviews last week that made my heart just so happy but anything helps if you've been listening to the show for a while just a little five star review takes two seconds don't forget the Patreon page is on and popping on Friday we're doing Bachelor Brain Dump on Monday we're doing Extra Pop so maybe we'll even do a Vander Vanderpump Rules episode recap after I watch, you know, the craziness that ensued this week. Uh, Also, the newsletter is live. I'll email you every single podcast episode I do on a weekly basis so you don't get uh, or so you don't miss out on anything. It's at morganptalks.com. You can sign up there. All right. I'm going to Florida. I'll see you next week. Love you like a sis.